The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson. Friends, there's no doubt about it. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Now, freshness is particularly important. For if a cigarette isn't truly fresh, it can't possibly give you the enjoyment it should. That's why every pack of Lucky's is extra tightly sealed, to bring you Lucky's better taste in all its natural freshness. Yes, Lucky's do taste better, because first, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Then, too, Lucky's taste better because they're made better, made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. So, friends, smoke the cigarette that has better taste when it's made and then brings you all that better taste in a fresh cigarette. Yes, be happy. Go Lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike and find out for yourself that Lucky's really do taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Friday was New Year's Day, and 1954 was ushered in by the nation's gridiron classic, the Rose Bowl game, between UCLA and Michigan State, before a record crowd of nearly 100,000 people. This game always produces statistics that are mulled over by sports lovers for weeks to come. How many yards each team gained by running, how many yards gained by passing, how many passes completed, how many intercepted. Yes, even the star of our show has been stunned by the amazing figures compiled by this football classic. A hundred thousand people at five dollars a piece. <laughs> Gosh, what a game. Ah, it must have been, Jack. It seems the Rose Bowl game gets more and more exciting every year. You're not kidding, Don. I can remember when it was only 80,000 people at three dollars a piece. <laughs> anyway, Don, did you notice that play where Paul Cameron got the oh, ball? I didn't see the game, Jack. You didn't? Wait a minute, Don. I thought I saw you in Pasadena that morning. Well, you did, but I went right home. Believe me, I'm never going there again. Oh, cheer up, Don. Maybe next year you'll win the prize as the best float. <laughs> and take those roses out of your hair. You look silly. <laughs> Besides, I thought Hi, that... Jack. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, Bob. Jack and I were just talking about the big game, New Year's Day. You saw it, didn't you, Bob? Oh, sure. I haven't missed the game in the Rose Bowl since Bing bought it. Bing? Bing bought the Rose Bowl? Well, not exactly. He bought Pasadena and they threw that in. <laughs> oh, well, Bob. Bob, as much as I like your brother, we're supposed to be doing a radio program. Now get your band ready. And... Jack, what kind of a program are we going to do today? Well, Don, since this is our first show of the new year, I thought maybe we ought to do a sketch based... Oh, hello, Mary. Hi, Jack. Hi, fellas. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. Glad you're feeling better. Yes, Mary. It's certainly good to have you back on the show. Well, Jack, I hated to miss last Sunday's program, but I had that thing that's been going around, Virus X. Yes, I know. That's why I sent over my doctor. Some doctor. Why? What's wrong? I've got news for you. He's a horse doctor. <laughs> he is not a horse doctor. He isn't, eh? When he got to my house, he threw a blanket over me and walked me around the room to cool me off. <laughs> no. When he started to braid my hair, I threw him out. <laughs> oh, well, and that explains it. You know, one day I called him up and told him my ankles hurt, and he sent me over four bandages. <laughs> Well, anyway, Mary, didn't my doctor give you any advice at all? Yes. He told me I had virus X and I shouldn't run tomorrow. 
<laughs> Mary, I'm trying to be serious. What did he really tell you? Well, he said it wasn't dangerous, gave me a prescription and charged me $10. Oh. And he told me that 300,000 people had virus X. 300,000 people at $10 a... <laughs> hey, that's even better than football. <laughs> Jack. Jack, what are you mumbling about? Nothing, nothing. Uh. Now, come on. This is our New Year's show, so let's get on with it. Hey, by the way, have any of you kids made your uh, New Year's resolutions? I have. Oh, you have, Don? Yeah, I made a resolution to cut my food in half. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It isn't good manners to take a whole turkey and stuff it in your mouth. <laughs> I've seen you do it, you know. No, 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 Jack. I'm serious about losing weight. I've given up bread, butter, and potatoes. Don, if you ever stop eating potatoes, Idaho will secede from the Union. <laughs> and speaking of resolutions, I hope that Dennis Day resolves not to annoy me anymore with those... Hey, by the way, Jack, where is Dennis? Oh, he won't be here for the show. He gets sillier every day. He sent me a note saying that he was in the hospital. Stupid kid expecting me to believe what he told me. Oh, now, wait just a minute, Jack. There's a lot of sickness going around. Dennis could be in the hospital. Having a baby? <laughs> uh, say, Jack, what? do you mind if I don't stay for the whole program? I'd like to leave early. Now, why? What do you have to do? Nothing. I just can't stand 30 minutes of this. <laughs> I don't blame you. Say, Bob, as long as Dennis isn't here, would you consider singing any many kind Many times, of... many times I have won. Wait for the orchestra! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Take it, fellas. What an eager beaver. <laughs> many times, many times I have won. Many times I have dreamed We'd be kissing like this My heart has been filled With the thought of holding you I've dreamed it so often At last it's come to with a smile, with a sigh, with a star up above, here we are, you and I, the beginning of love, while searching for heaven, I found it just then. Take me there many times again With a smile, with a sigh With a star up above Here we are, you and I The beginning of love while searching for heaven I found it just then Take me there many times was Bob Crosby singing many times. And very good, Bob. Very good. And now for an encore, I will sing... Bob, we only need one song. <laughs> That's all we ever have on a show. One song. <laughs> now look, kids. We've got a very important... Now who can that be? Come in. Hey, it's Mel Blank. I hope I'm not interrupting nothing, Mr. Blank. No, no. What do you want, Mel? Well, I wanted to tell you that I'm available again. Uh, available again? Yeah, I was sick with that virus, but Mr. Benny was kind enough to send over his doctor. Oh, Jack's doctor, eh? What'd he do for you? Oh, he gave me a shot, and now I feel fine. <laughs> Now, 
Well, Mel... <laughs> Mel, I'm glad you're better again, and I'll keep you in mind if anything turns up. Huh? Thanks. Oh, oh, just a minute, Mel. Folks, give Mel Blank a great big hand, will you? <laughs> You, uh, you can go now, Mel. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny, I don't like to mention it, but this year you forgot to give me a Christmas present. You just got it. <laughs> so long, Mel. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Benny. You know, Jack, I like Mel. He's always good for a laugh. Yeah, he was sure the life of the party at my house New Year's Eve. Well, Don, we certainly had a great time. You can say that again, Bob. And Mary, Mary, I'm awfully glad you were well enough to attend my party, too. Oh, so am I, Don. I had a wonderful time. But I haven't had a chance to tell you what happened after Jack and I left your house. Oh, Mary. What happened, Mary? Come on, tell me. Well, you... Mary, it's all over. Now forget about it. I will not. Oh, Mary, don't tell him now, will you? I will. Don, it was about two in the morning, and Jack was taking me home. Oh, gosh, it was a wonderful party. Yeah, Mary, sure was a great New Year's Eve party. And isn't it a lovely night out? Mm, sure is. What a beautiful sky. You know, the stars look so close, and they seem to be different colors. Red, pink, blue, yellow... That's confetti on your glasses. <laughs> oh, yes. Anyway, Mary, it was certainly a wonderful New Year's Eve party. We sure had a lot of... Pardon me, folks. Pardon me. Huh? What do you think I ought to get my wife for Christmas? Christmas? Mr. Christmas was a whole week ago. This is New Year's. You mean it's already 1949? <laughs> Look, it's 1954. Oh, my goodness. I better get home. <laughs> well, well, everybody celebrates in his own way, I guess. Well, here's your house. Here's your house, Mary. Yeah. Mary. What is it, Jack? Well, since this is the new year... How about giving me a little kiss? Huh? Oh, Jack, let's not go through that again. You always get so emotional. I do not. You do, too. The last time I kissed you, you ran home, threw yourself across the bed, and cried for an hour. <laughs> well, I always do when I drink too much. You had one glass of eggnog. Well, somebody spiked the nutmeg. <laughs> Anyway, Mary... Well, good night, Jack, and a happy new year. Good night, Mary. Hey, wait a minute, Mary. How would you like to go to the Rose Bowl game? Say, that'd be wonderful, but have you got tickets? No, but there's plenty of time. Look, the game doesn't start till tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? It's already 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, don't worry about it. I'll get the tickets. Come on, let's go in your house. I want to use your phone. That's an old excuse, but I'll take a chance. <laughs> Let's see, who can I... Well, I'll be darned. There's the blanket. You weren't kidding about my doctor, were you? <laughs> now, let's see, who can I get tickets from? Jack, you shouldn't call anyone. It's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but it's New Year's. Now, who can I call for tickets? Well, let me see now. Do you know Red Sanders, the coach of UCLA? Not very well. But wait a minute, I'm pretty friendly with Jess Hill, you know, the coach of USC. I'll call him. The USC coach? Oh, he may have... Wait a minute, Jack. You can't call Jess Hill at this hour. He may be asleep. What do you mean, asleep? He hasn't slept since the Notre Dame game. <laughs> but maybe he isn't in a good mood. Wait a minute. I know who'll let me have the extra tickets if he has any. Who? Ronald Coleman. Jack, you wouldn't call Mr. Coleman at this hour. Why not? This is New Year's Eve. Hand me the phone. Uh, the Ronald Coleman residence, Sherwood the butler speaking. Uh, Sherwood, this is Mr. Benny. May I speak to Mr. Coleman? Uh, Mr. Coleman is asleep, sir. Asleep already? Didn't he celebrate New Year's Eve? Oh, yes. We had a rip-roaring time here till almost nine o'clock. <laughs> Nine 
Nine o'clock? How could you celebrate the New Year that early? We're on London time, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, Sherwood, the reason I call is to find out if Mr. Coleman has any extra tickets to the Rose Bowl. Oh, I'm sure he hasn't any. Oh. Well, in that case, Sherwood, I'm sorry I woke you up. But I do want to take this opportunity to wish you a happy New Year and that 1954 will be a year that you and yours will enjoy not only health and happiness... But every... I, I say, old chap, would you mind saying goodbye? There's a draft going up my nightshirt. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Sherwood. Goodbye. Uh, Do you have any luck, Jack? No, the Coleman's didn't have any extra tickets. But they have cross ventilation. <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. Jack, it's, it's after 2.30. I- I'm going to bed. Wait a minute, Mary. I just thought of something. For the Rose Bowl game, they always put about 6,000 tickets on public sale. All we have to do is go down and buy them at the box office. But, Jack, there'll be a million people there. All right, so look how early we'll be. Now, I'll call Rochester, have him pick us up in my car, and take us out to Pasadena. <laughs> Do you think the car will make this hill, Jack? Sure. Rochester, give it a little more gas. Okay. (laughs) We made it, Mary. You can hop in now. (laughs) Try to make some time, Rochester. Yes, sir. Rochester, where were you when Mr. Benny called you? I was at a party on Central Avenue. Was the party over? Oh, no. In fact, it was getting bigger and bigger. Who gave it? I don't know. The people started uh, died six years ago. <laughs> Rochester, you mean the party's been going on for six years? Longer than that. Some of the people there are still drinking near beer. <laughs> well, Rochester... Don't they know that prohibition was repealed? There's one old man there who doesn't even know it was started. (laughs) Now, Rochester, I know a shortcut to Pasadena. Turn to the left on the next corner. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. If you turn left, you'll be going in the wrong direction. You should turn right. No, I think left. What do you think, Rochester? Straight ahead. (laughs) Look, there's a policeman on the corner. Stop the car and I'll ask him. Uh, pardon me, do we turn left here to get to the Rose Bowl? I don't know. <laughs> well, will this street take us to Pasadena? I don't know. <laughs> well, does it lead into the freeway? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know anything. A fine policeman you are. I'm not a policeman. Then why are you wearing that blue uniform? I'm a Western Union boy, but I look lousy in brown. <laughs> Drive on, Rochester, straight down this street, then turn left till we hit the freeway. Gee, what a crowd. Yeah, here it is almost noon. We've been standing in this ticket line for five hours. Yeah. Oh, look! Here comes the Rose Bowl band marching into the stadium. Oh, yeah. Go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Be happy, go lucky, and smoke more in 54. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today.
happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Be happy, go lucky, and smoke more in 54. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Mary, there's something exciting about a band at a football game. Yeah. Gee, I wish this ticket line would move. I want to make sure to... Hey, you back there, stop shoving. I wonder how long it'll be before we... I said stop shoving. I can't understand, Mary. People go to football games and it brings out the worst. Of... Look, I warned you twice. If you shove me once more, I'll drag you out of line. I can't and... help it, mister. People are pushing me. <laughs> I don't care if they Jack, are. Jack, Jack, control yourself. All right. Lucky for her, she's wearing glasses. <laughs> Say, Mary, I'm getting kind of hungry. Me too. I think there's a man selling hot dogs over there. Where? Oh, yes. Hey, mister, you with the hot dogs. How many is your desire? Why, it's Mr. Kitzel. Well, Happy New Year, Mr. Kitzel. Likewise, and season's greetings to you too, Miss Livingstone. <laughs> well, same to you, Mr. Kitzel. And you know, this is a coincidence. The first time we met you was at the Rose Bowl, and you were selling hot dogs then too. That was eight years ago. These are the same hot dogs. I had some left over. <laughs> well, if these hot dogs are eight years old, I don't think I want any. Mr. Bennett, to you I'll give the fresh ones, and they'll be only six cents apiece. Wait a minute. Hot dogs for only six cents a piece? Where do you get your meat? From a doctor in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Jack, that must be your horse doctor. Do you want the pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, or the mustard in the middle and our caro on top? <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, stop making jokes, and here's your money. Thank you, Mr. Benny, and a very happy new year. Same to you. Same to you. Say, Mary, gee, this hot dog tastes good. Oh, darn it, this line doesn't seem to move up at all. Boy, I sure hope we can get tickets. I'm so anxious to see the game. Psst. Hey, chum. <laughs> chum. Huh? You say you want to get tickets? You say you want to see the game? Tell you when I'm going to do. What? I got a pair of tickets smack on the 40-yard line. And you can have them for only 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Choking on Man of War. <laughs> You're darn right I'm choking. Look, mister, you got a nerve charging $50 for a pair of football tickets. That ain't nothing. I heard about a comedian who gives applause for Christmas presents. <laughs> That's beside the point. Hey, you back there, I warned you three times to stop shoving. If you don't, I'll... You what? <laughs> Gee. Somebody must have taken her place. I took a place. I'm a husband. Well, congratulations. She's a lovely girl. Jack, Jack, move up. You're next to the ticket window. Oh, yes, yes. All right, mister. How many tickets do you want? Uh, how much are they? $5.50. Well. Here's my money, Jack. No, no. No, no, Mary. I'll pay for these. I'll buy my own. I've still got money left from the May Company. <laughs> Okay. Uh, one ticket, mister, please. Uh, here you are. Uh, give me one ticket right next to hers. Huh? Here you are, and boy, are you two lucky. Those are the last tickets. How do you like that, the last ticket? Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. Boy, are we lucky. I had my heart set out of gear on seeing this game, and now I'm going to see it. Come on, Mary, we're, we're over at Tunnel 16. Okay. Kind of chilly. I want to get a cup of coffee first. You want one, Mary? No, I don't want to get mixed up in that crowd. I'll go ahead and hold our seats. Okay. See you in a few minutes, Mary. Don't let them start the game without me. <laughs> Let's see where I can get the coffee. Oh, there's the stand over there. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum da dum Oh, boy, I was up all night, stood in line for five hours, but it was worth it to get this ticket. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum Hey, mister. Mister. Huh? How many tickets you got to the game? One. What'd you pay for it? Five fifty. 
I'll give you six dollars for it. What? Are you crazy? I've been looking forward to this game all year. I've been up all night calling people, begging people for tickets. I drove all the way down here from Beverly Hills in that traffic. I waited in line all night to get this ticket. I'll give you eight dollars. It's guys like you that always... <laughs> how, how much? Eight bucks. Mister, do me a favor, will you? What? There'll be a girl sitting next to you. Tell her you picked my pocket. <laughs> Okay, here's your money. Thanks. So long, mister. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum Gee, I hate to miss that game. But then again, with this money, I can... Wait a minute. What kind of $5 bill did he give me? Look at the picture on it. Liberace. <laughs> on the other side is his brother, George. <laughs> hey, mister, come back here. Come back here. Come back here with my ticket. Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, a word from the sweetheart of Lucky Strike. Hi, friends. This is Dorothy Collins. You know, I'll bet that if someone asked you why you smoked, what it was exactly you liked about a cigarette, I'll bet the important word in your answer would be... Taste. Because, gee, isn't good taste what everybody wants in a cigarette? Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. And there are two good reasons why that's true. In the first place, L.S. MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. And second, Lucky's are made better to taste better made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. And that, friends, is the whole story. That's exactly why Lucky's taste better, because Lucky's are made with fine tobacco and because they're made better. Why don't you try a carton soon? Be happy. Go Lucky. How about it? Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! Well, anyway, Don, now you know I'll, I'll never go to another football game with Jack. I don't blame you, Mary. That smart guy buying my ticket with that phony $5 bill. I'd like to see him again. I tell him plenty. Well, drop into Ciro's tonight and you can. How do you know he's going to be there? I got a date with him. <laughs> How do you like that? Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>